I'm Mark Dawson. I work at the Peter McCallum Cancer Centre. I also have an appointment at the University of Melbourne in the Centre for Cancer Research. My area of research is cancer biology in general. We focus primarily on the hematological cancers and in particular an aggressive cancer called acute myeloid leukemia. I guess I've always been a very curious person. I enjoyed my time studying medicine and I enjoy being a doctor. I can't see a time in my life where I won't be a doctor. I think you know, that ability to be able to communicate to patients um, extracts from me a part of my personality that is very rewarding. I guess why I went into research was that clinical medicine couldn't explain everything to me. If we had four or five people who had an acute myeloid leukemia in a particular subtype of acute myeloid leukemia, we know that only probably one of those four people will actually be cured by chemotherapy. But we don't really understand why. And so to understand why, uh, we needed to understand the disease in greater depth. And for that, I needed to train to become a scientist, uh, to be able to understand the molecular basis for this disease and the molecular causes that lead to a person responding or potentially not responding. The first thing to say is that we should no longer think of cancers as a unified entity. Even within a particular individual, there's great variation between their one cancer. What that really means is that a cancer that may be present in one particular site, say your bone marrow, might be quite different to a cancer that is located with another, within another area of the hematological system, such as your spleen. And technology has really enabled us in this endeavor. Um, we have the ability to sequence people's genomes and understand what is driving their cancer at a depth that was previously unimaginable. And understanding what those mutations are and how they particularly initiate and maintain a cancer is now largely possible. The area of research that we're currently interested in is tackling this question of heterogeneity. And that, that, that heterogeneity is, is really what drives the differential responses that ultimately leads to inadequate cures and ultimately leads to cancers coming back. Can we correct that? That's one of our aims. You know, can we build new therapies to be able to change the ways cancers behave? And do cancers always evolve by acquiring new mutations? We don't really know the answer to that. Cancers may evolve by changing the way they adapt to their particular environment, be it a therapeutic pressure, be it how much nutrients are available, be it what other cells are around it. And that adaptation may not necessarily involve a genetic mutation. I do it because it is incredibly enjoyable, actually. Um, you know, the opportunity to be able to discover something is rare. Um, but when you do, there is a thrill that cannot be put into words. You know, there is that one moment in time where you might know something that nobody else in the world knows. And you might know that this knowledge is going to change the way we either diagnose a disease, treat a disease, or, or challenge a way a disease has been thought of. 